Hi. Going to do a quick review of the captain's birthday party from the Dan. Um, I just woke up today and started listening to it. Not like for the first time. Not like I just woke up and it was just the first thing I threw on. And um, I figured I'd share my thoughts on it while they're fresh in my mind. This album is fucking great. It's about 20 minutes, not very long. Uh, it's called the Captain's Birthday Party because it's his birthday. Recorded on November 27th at the Roadhouse in London, England. Uh, it features a lineup, a unique damn lineup that uh, would only exist for a short period of time with uh, Dave Bain, of course, on vocals. Uh, Captain on guitar, obviously. Uh, Lou Edmonds on second guitar, which I still don't understand. Lou would later go on to Pill and some other stuff. Uh, Brian James on guitar. And on drums is Rat, not Rat Scabies, but John Moss, who would later go on to join Culture Club. And whatever you think of Culture Club, like, his drumming on this album is pretty intense. It's fast. He beats the shit out of the drums. It's a great performance. This album is a live album in the truest sense. It's not very belabored over or overdubbed. I mean, it's a punk rock live album recorded at, at arguably the height of that movement in the UK. And the 77. Or maybe the height would probably be the summer that year. But anyway, this was... A m recorded a month before their second album, Music for Pleasure, was going to come out. Rat didn't like the album, you know, get in the queue for that, and left the band. Uh, so, this was a, a month before the album came out, even. He was he quit right after they finished recording. There was some kind of incident in, I think it was France, in a hotel or something. We got into a fight. And the other guys didn't jump in. And, I, and he makes it sound like they should have. And I don't know if they should have. Because I think it was like a fight with the authorities there. Or the, the staff, security. And Rat, you know, if you're a Dan fan, you know anything about them. He's, he can be kind of an asshole. Um, he thinks he's being funny, but he's not. I love him, but I mean, come on. So he probably pissed somebody off. And the band was probably just like, yeah, fucked out. Why are we going to get in a... We're going to get on the ground and roll around with the security and get in trouble more because he got caught doing something stupid, which is par for course with this guy. And again, I love him, but you know. So this album was recorded a month before Music for Pleasure was released. And it's got songs from that album being performed live on it, which would be a rarity going forward uh, for the band. They'd hardly ever pull out songs from Music for Pleasure. It starts off with You Take My Money, one of the better songs on the album. I like the album. I did a review of it, a really bad review. It's awful. I'm going to redo it someday. But yeah, during the review, I just I spaced on side two completely. Like, I, I was reading the titles and I'm like, I don't know how any of this sounds. It's a, it's a good album. It just I was having like a, a senior moment on that day or something. So, um, it starts off with You Take My Money. I was, I was looking at myself, I'm like, what's wrong here? I'm like, I don't have any jewelry. Whatever, I'm not, you know. I can't always look 100%. But um, you take my money, and the sound, right away, you can tell this isn't going to be, this isn't for anything comes alive. It's perfect, though. You know, for the kind of band they are, um, it's the kind of sound you want. It's just kind of shitty. It's big, it's loud, um not an audiophile experience by any like measure you know um they follow up that with another song from music for pleasure creep and they um and later in the set they also do problem child which they dedicate to rap um the dave on this album is kind of going nuts uh Famously, the Dan would always be usually drunk. You know, their their riders called for a lot of booze. 
And, uh, but in those days, and especially the band like The Damned at that time, you weren't like going to their shows to see like, well, I hope he really nails the guitar outro on I fall. It wasn't about that. It was all energy, just energy, energy, bow, bow, bow. And Dave is just hollering and yelping. Um, very out of character, I think, for the guy he evolved into, like the crooning uh, vampire-esque guy he became. Here he's, you know, he's got, you know, he still looks like Dave, but he's more in an Iggy Pop sort of zone. He's yelping and hollering and yelling. And this is probably the earliest uh, time-wise year uh, in my music collection that uses the C word. And that's consternation, uh, which the, the NC uh, starts the, the gig off like, oh, you're consternated. No, he said he calls him cons, but uh, I just feel weird about saying it. I try to avoid saying it like, like, a, like, a, like a jackass. I don't know, I just say, like, grew up in a house full of sisters. It's a really triggering word to them. And by osmosis, I kind of... But we're also Irish. So if you know actual Irish people, they can't stop saying it. That's all they say. You know. Good morning. Good morning, you cunt. So, um... From the first album, they do Fan Club. New Rose, of course. Their version of Suges, I Feel Alright. Which is great. And during this, um version someone attempts to play saxophone and it's very low effort much like this channel it's just he tap asses it and then stops and then tries to do it i don't think he's mic'd up but you can hear him in the background just trying to do something <clears throat> during uh, i feel all right born to kill shows up fan club great version there's only eight tracks on this album but it's 20 minutes long eight tracks it's a great get you out of bed album, which is what it did for me this morning. Um, you know, and then I got right back into bed to talk about it. But yeah, it's just that boom. It's a bolt of energy. Um, very little banter in between songs. They, you know, like I said, they dedicate Problem Child to Rat. And as far as the music, I mean, they sound kind of fucked up, obviously, but it's kind of tight, you know, with that in mind it's not too bad uh it's not train wreck level like they keep everything moving along john moss on drums what a great job he does here man a lot of energy you know it's not rat but it's good he's uh he was new to the band at this time too like november i don't know i don't know if the timeline is on that but he was he was very new he subsequently stayed with them until sometime early in 78 when he left. But, uh, yes, this album's great. It was released in 1986 by Stiff Records. I think they just found like they had it in the vault. And, uh, I don't think the band had much to do with this release as far as it coming out, which is part for course with the damned albums throughout their career. They don't have control over anything, and that's why they suffer. But, um, the, uh, it was reissued on CD a couple of times by Castle Communications, Sanctuary, the Diversion. Um, but uh, yeah, it's as far as like a, a listening experience or a complete listening experience, and you want to hear the damn live. Many people would tell you like Final Damnation, even Molten Lager, which was a, kind of a the '90s lineup. But this is fine, you know. Th this captures that moment and what the original Damned was all about. Uh, they are like really three or four bands. Like these early punk, um, the first two like early 77 UK punk albums are very different. The Brian James led Damned from what they would go on under Captain's guidance and Dave, you know. And then when Captain left, uh, they would change again musically uh, and Dave would kind of seal the ship. And um, there, there's a, a thrill line with all this stuff. There's, well, 
usually there's some kind of punky type songs on every album, except for like Phantasmagoria. There's nothing on there that's right away what you'd think of as punk rock, but that album is fucking brilliant too, man. It's so good. But this album here, Captain's Birthday, is a great listen. 20 minutes, you're in and out. It, it covers a lot of the highlights in their set. Lou Edmonds, I'm still not sure what he's doing here. It, um, and, you know, I, I brought it before, but the whole thing about having Captain Sensible in your band, you know, reluctantly playing bass, and then you're like, you know, we need to... How'd that conversation go? Okay, mates, boyos, we need another guitar player. I want the two guitar sound. This would be Brian. That's how he talks. Hey, mates, we need the two guitar sound. Uh, and Captain's like, yeah, fuck, all right, cool. Who are we going to get to play bass? And bass? No, no, you're going to stay on bass. We're going to get the guy that's going to be in Public Image Limited in a couple years. He's going to come in here now, and he'll just be another body on stage. Because you're not fucking going to hear what he's doing. I don't know what the point was of that whole thing. I think there's some kind of Brian uh, sort of being controlling kind of thing. I don't know if that was a personality kind of fucking move. But it is really weird. Like, what? why, you know? You have Captain right there, who is arguably the best punk rock guitar player of all time. Not just in a technically proficient sense, but in a creative sense. Um, I mean, who's who's better than him? I mean, I love Steve Jones' sound. He's got a great sound. He is very rock and roll. But Captain, like, plays circles around Steve. I don't know. That's just me. This album was quickly re-released, like, I don't know, half a, half a year later, as not the Captain's Birthday Party. That was the name of it. It was the same title with not in the front. Uh, with the addition of I Fall on the vinyl version. I, I don't know. It's the same recording otherwise. Uh, the one I have is just the, the, the original one. Well, I don't have it. It's part of my... It's so weird now with streaming music, you know, because it's like, I have a collection digitally, but um, if the EMP goes off, I'm not going to have that anymore. But I'll always have it in my heart. Uh, where's your heart? No, your heart's here now. Yeah. So when you see the Pledge of Allegiance like that, it's, you're in the wrong place because it's actually it's right here. I love the, the malleable reality sort of situation we're living through. But yeah, that's it. Uh, just a quick one here about uh, The Captain's Birthday Party. It's a great live album, man. Incendiary, fiery, all those journalism words you could use to describe this album it's great it's like a cup of coffee not like a real not a good cup of coffee but just what one, one you hastily make to get yourself out the door which you later come home and you say like why is this area such a mess you know what I'm saying you got nothing in church only people who go there and show they're playing ignorant and don't understand that congregation on weekends won't change their behavior. <laughs>